Hi, welcome back. In this video, which is part of the Making the Camber Dress series, I'm going to be working on the headpiece. In my sketch, we can see that there's lots of flowers on it, which will be the same flowers as I've used on the dress. The front part is the mast of Parliament House, the flagpole at Parliament House, which is a really iconic camber shape, so I really wanted to include that in there. Um, that's going to be silver because the flagpole's silver, but it's not going to have a flag on top. It's going to come up into the red crest of the gang gang, which is going to be made from red feathers. Um, it's not going to be as big as I drew it here. I got drew it like a big showgirl headpiece in my original sketch, but my client wanted it smaller. And then the gang gang's crest is quite little, so we've actually shortened that. And that's going to be made from red ostrich feathers and I bought ones that have got nice sort of floppy ends to give us that little curl over the front that the gang gang's got. So far I've made the frame of the headpiece so I've used this double headband which I get from feather.com.au because that's a really good base to start building the frame on. Then I've used thick florist wire in brown and then I've just used some thin green florist wire just to add some extra parts to it just to stabilize it and also to give me extra and parts to glue the flowers onto. It comes all the way around the back and sits over my client's head. And then at the top, I've done these two lines of wire here, which look like that from the side, which are gonna support my feathers when I glue them in. They'll go between that, and then I've got something to attach the feathers to, and they're gonna get shorter as they go back. So we're gonna have the floppy ones at the front, and then shorter feathers coming back. So that's my base, my frame. And it looks really ugly at the minute, but you're not gonna see it at all when it's done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use my glue gun and I'm gonna add brown felt to the inside. This is gonna make it more comfortable for my client to wear. It's gonna hold everything in place. And once this is on the inside again, it gives me more structure to add flowers and to actually add glue onto to hold it all together. So I'm going to start just by cutting some strips of this and gluing them to the inside of the frame. So this is my frame with all the felt added. So I started by covering it on the inside so it's smooth and there's no sharp wires that are going to dig into my client's head. And then I've added more on the outside as well just to connect all those wires together. So I've got more base to add all the flowers onto so I've got something to glue them to. Um, it looks really ugly at the minute, but you're not going to see any of that. You'll only see the inside, which is pretty neat. So I'm happy with that. Next, I'm going to work on my Mast of Parliament house. So this is what I've made. So it's a really iconic shape, but I couldn't make a replica of it because the base would have been too big to put on here. So I've kind of made a almost 2D version of it. So it's still got the shape. So it's, it is 3D that way, but the legs are not where they are in real life. But from a distance, it's going to give us that shape of the flagpole on Parliament House. This is made from balsa wood, which I've glued together with the E6000. So then that is going to glue on and sit at the front there. And then our feather's going to come up from inside it instead of the flag. So that's how the front of it's going to look when it's together. And then we'll have more feathers coming backwards. I'll trim off all of these excess bits. And then the next feather will sit. That's too long. I've got to cut it down. But then the next feather will sit in behind it. So I'm really happy with the, the shape and the size. These legs are in the air, but they're going to have flowers around them. So that doesn't matter. Let me just zoom in a bit so you can see how that looks there. I'll make sure I get it really straight and that's how it looks sort of from the sides. So next I need to spray paint this silver because the flagpole at Parliament House is made of silver metal so I need it to be silver. So my little Parliament House flagpole has been spray painted silver and it's dry so the first thing I'm going to do is attach this to the head piece using my glue gun. I've just put a pin in to line it up centrally and it balances quite nicely on the wires that I have here. 
So I'm just going to put some blobs of glue, we're trying not to move it, in behind it to hold it where I've got it balanced. And you won't see these once we've got the feathers and the flowers in place. And as I glue those on, that's going to hold it in place even more as well. Once these ones dry, I can just layer up a little bit more just to make sure it's not going to move. Yeah, that looks straight. I'm happy with that. It looks straight from the side as well. All right, so the next most important bit to get in is my first feather. Oops, let that glue dry for a minute. All right, I'm just going to let that dry so I can put the feather in without it sticking. Okay, so I've taken my floppy feather that we want to be the front of the gang gang crest and I've just used my rotary cutter to cut all the ostrich plumes off the bottom part and then I want this to sit through here like that to look like the middle of the flagpole so I'm wondering if I need to spray paint this silver as well instead of red so it looks more like the flagpole and then it comes up to that feather at the top I think I do. All right, I'm just gonna go and spray paint that quickly. That shouldn't take too long to dry though. Okay, so this is silver now. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good because it's looking more like the actual flagpole now. So what I need to do now is, I think I'll glue it at the front. So I'll glue it at the base in position and then I'm just going to put a tiny bit of glue at the front just to hold it like that and then that's flopping forward perfectly like our little gang gang. Awesome. I'll anchor the bottom first and let it dry. Make sure it's nice and central. That's it. I'll peg it in place while that bit dries and when this, this bit's dry then I'll just glue the top with a tiny bit of glue to hold it. Okay, so now my front feather is positioned in place. I'm going to go behind the flagpole and put more feathers all the way down this curve. And they're gradually going to get shorter, so I need to cut that one down a bit more. So they're going to get shorter, so the front part's going to be the longest. Just going to use some of the off cuts which have got stiffer shafts in them just to support in between. I'm just doing this so the glue doesn't run down the back. All right, I think that's dry enough. We can lift it up and see how it looks. There's our little gang gang crest. I'm wondering if we just need to separate that one with something a bit stiffer. Actually, no, I like it like it is because his crest does come forward a lot like that, doesn't it? And that's how it's looking from the front. So that red's really framed the color of the flagpole now. Yeah, awesome. No, I'm going to leave it like that. Stop fiddling. Okay, next up, flowers.
All right, I am done adding the flowers to it. So at the front, I've created this little curve of tulips around the Parliament House flagpole. And then I've sort of filled it in to hide the wires as much as I can, but without hiding much of the flagpole because we don't want to lose that shape because it has to be really distinctive from a distance. It has to be recognizable. Then around the back, I've kind of used the flowers to help prop up the little crest a little bit and then filled in the gaps. So we've got lovely bright flowers all the way around. So I'm going to leave it like that for now and my client can try it on tonight and then we can decide if she wants any more um, flowers, if we put crystals on it. I'm wondering if we might add crystals to this just to make it stand out but it depends what she wants. So yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now and then my client can try it on tonight and we'll go from there. So when my client tried the headpiece on, we decided that the flagpole of Parliament House was just blending in a little bit too much. So we are adding SS20 clear rhinestones to it just to make it sparkle and really stand out. And I'm just using Fabrifuse and my wax pencil. And I now sell Fabrifuse wax pencils and lots of different rhinestone sizes and colours on my website. Now this definitely would have been easier if I'd rhinestone this before I had put it onto the headpiece but sometimes your designs evolve and you don't realise till um, down the track that you want to do something like this so it's a bit awkward but it's definitely possible. So I'm going to keep putting these rhinestones on and then leave it to dry. The next part of the camera dress series is the last one and in that one I'll show you how I embellish the leggings and the gauntlets and the shoes. And then I will show you the finished headpiece and the finished look all together. Thanks for watching. Please leave me a like. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please consider supporting me over on Patreon if you enjoy watching my videos. And I will see you next time for the final part of making the Canberra dress.